everybody. The Salvation Army's missionary outreach began in 1865. One evening, William Booth left his West London lodgings and walked along Mall End Waste, a one and a half mile stretch of shows, shooting ranges, petty dealers and quack doctors. Outside the blind beggar pub, he listened to some street evangelists. When they had finished, he was invited to speak and found it an invigorating challenge. At midnight, when he returned home, he told Catherine, his wife, Darling, I have found my destiny. The Salvation Army has a remarkable testimony of trust in God. When the first Salvationists gathered in the East End, they had nothing. No place to call their own. No building, no money, and very few people. But somehow God took the commitment of those few people and multiplied it. From those early beginnings, the Salvation Army today works in 132 countries. In Africa, America and the Caribbean, Europe, South Asia, South Pacific and East Asia. And millions of people who today serve the Lord in this way. The same is happening in the Church Universal. So, so how is this happening today? It starts with every individual seeking to find one's Christian destiny or purpose. In the words of Jesus to each of us, as he said to Simon Peter, Follow me. Welcome to worship.
Let us pray. Father God, in Jesus' name, I thank you for being internally faithful in directing my path, for your comfort, guidance and protection by your spirit, and for being so watchful as you continue to hold my very life within your powerful hands. I continually praise and thank you for your great wisdom concerning your will and your plans and purpose for my life. I am willing and able to clearly hear your voice when you speak to me, for you, me, for you know me as your child and I know you as my Father and my God. I thank you for opening my ears to hear your only voice and have you shut my ears to hear the voice of the enemy, preventing me from straying down the wrong path. I thank you for leading me down the path of freedom found through your righteousness. I thank you, Lord, as the path you have ordained for me is to take, for me to take is continually growing lighter and brighter as it becomes clearer and reaches the fullness of your will for my life. Thank you, Father, for allowing Jesus to impart wisdom, revelation, knowledge and understanding to me. I thank you, Lord, that confusion is part of my life and I will clearly know and understand your will and plans for my purpose in life through the fullness of you, of who you have made to me to be in Christ. I completely trust you and will not lean on to your own understanding. I will acknowledge you in all my ways as, as you are directing my steps to stay on the right path you have chosen for me. I believe that as I continue to place my life and trust into you you continue to allow me to grow and lead in all things in every area of my life you continue to show me the way and which i am able to go and will fulfill my destiny and purpose in life i thank you lord for helping me to clearly hear your voice and for showing me what your will is in my life as you guide my spirit i ask you now reveal your perfect will and plans for my purpose in life and put your workers in my path to help me attain in in mighty in the mighty name of jesus i pray amen
Good morning and welcome to Woking SA Quarantine News. I'm your anchor, Stan, over there. Today's top story is six very silly football clubs that will remain unnamed try to make it so that they never have to compete for European football ever again. Football fans everywhere say they aren't mad, they're just disappointed. And as people up and down the country start planning their summer holiday, the Met Office has advised that the British summer is due to last between 1645 on Monday the 12th of July and 1700 on Monday the 12th of July. And now we can go to our reporter in the field. Well... We heard two weeks ago how Jesus surprised his followers by gifting them a fishy fry-up and sitting down to breakfast with them. Since then it seems that events have moved on and we have more to report. As breakfast drew to an end it seems Jesus, recently back from a short trip to save us all from our sins, decided to approach one of his followers, Simon Peter and asked him a very peculiar question indeed. Do you love me? Of course, as one of Jesus' most trusted followers, Simon Peter was a little put out. He assumed his love for Jesus was beyond question, and he said, of course, he loved him. Jesus asked once again, Do you love me? And again Simon Peter said yes. Jesus asked one more time, and Peter, dismayed, replied, Of course I love you. Then Jesus asked Simon Peter to follow him, ignoring everything else, ignore what others were doing, and to focus on Jesus and to follow him. Perhaps that's something we should all do. Maybe we should take a leaf out of Simon Peter's book and listen to Jesus, focus on him, and follow wherever he calls us to go. Back to you in the studio. Wow, how amazing is that? That's all for the Tea Time News. We'll be back for the evening news. Until then, keep safe and goodbye.
reading is from John 21 and beginning at verse 15, where Jesus reinstates Peter. When they finished eating, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you truly love me more than these? Yes, Lord, he said, you know that I love you. Jesus said, feed my lambs. Again, Jesus said, Simon, son of John, do you truly love me? And he answered, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said, take care of my sheep. The third time he said to him, Simon, son of John, do you love me? And Peter was hurt because Jesus asked him a third time, do you love me? And he said, Lord, you know all things. You know that I love you. Jesus said, feed my sheep. I tell you the truth. When you were younger, you dressed yourself and went where you wanted. But when you were old, you will stretch out your hands and someone else will dress you and lead you to where you do not want to go. Jesus said this to indicate the kind of death by which Peter would glorify God. Then he said to him, follow me. Peter turned and saw that the disciple whom Jesus loved was following them. This was the one who had leaned back against Jesus at the supper table and had said, Lord, who is going to betray you? When Peter saw him, he asked, Lord, what about him? Jesus answered, if I want him to remain alive until I return, what is that to you? You must follow me. And because of this, the rumour spread.
The will of God for our lives is worked out by our love for Christ and our willingness to follow him. I often wonder what Jesus was like. Was he a man of few words, but when he spoke, had such an influence in people's lives that no one else can match? Again, we hear few words to Peter, but with great implications. Follow me. Although I have sat nav, there have been many times in my life when I have been grateful to follow someone else who knows the way. I remember not long after being here, I needed to get some shopping. Two hours later, I returned and Mick said, where have you been? And I simply said, I got lost. On the Christian pathway, it's easy to get lost when we take our eyes off the one we should be following. So what does following Jesus really mean? Was Jesus going to take Simon Peter on a new journey, one he had not been on before? And the answer is yes. Peter had to place himself where Jesus wanted him to be. It was time for Peter to take up his cross, which would not portray a good image in Peter's mind at that time. But Jesus was beckoning Peter to a different way of life, from catching fish to tending and feeding lambs and sheep. To follow Christ's example and to imitate his life. To put Christ first in his life and surrender to his lead. And Jesus almost gets Peter to that point when Peter hits another hurdle. Let us look at verse 20. Peter turned and saw the disciple whom Jesus loved following them. He was the one who had leaned back against Jesus at the supper to ask, Lord, who is going to betray you? When Peter saw him, he asked, Lord, what about him? And Jesus answered, If I want him to remain until I return, what is that to you? You follow me. You see, Peter became distracted. He became preoccupied by what Jesus was expecting someone else to do. Lord, what about him? And the Lord said, there is nothing for you to know. Friends, it is sufficient or should be sufficient for each of us to seek God's will for our own lives instead of seeking out God's will for others, although we can often help them. You see, Peter could have, even at this stage of his life, lost everything. If he had become so consumed with what John should be doing, he could have forgotten his own ministry. As we continue and think about coming out of the pandemic and the way forward, I challenge you not to be distracted in what others should be doing, but seeking God's will for your own life by praying, Lord, what do you want me to do for you? At one call we were at, there was a lady who was struggling with a job she was doing at the call. It just shouldn't have happened. And we were given the opportunity to open our own charity shop. And we asked this lady about working there rather than being in the role that she found herself in. Well, we opened the charity shop and we couldn't keep her away. She loved it. She'd found her ministry and no matter what anybody said to her, nothing could distract her from it. It was a joy. It was a joy to see her and those who came in contact with her. That's what makes church vibrant and exciting. But distractions occur and they are all different for each of us. 
I wonder what you say you would say what a distraction is. A distraction is something that takes your attention away from what you are supposed to be doing. Do you remember Eve? In the Garden of Eden, everything was provided. It was utopia. The serpent was able to distract Eve when she was isolated. He lied to her and convinced her that what God really said was not true. She got distracted and made a mistake and she took herself out of God's will. You remember Samson? You can read about Samson in Judges chapters 13 to 16. What you will find there is a man who had a, de a destiny and let his relationship distract him from his purpose. Samson's identity was established in God and his Nazarite vow was part of who Samson was. It's important to remember that your identity will always be a point of attack from the enemy. Samson was now different. The key parts of his vow were constantly challenged by Delilah. She continued to distract Samson from his identity and convinced him to give away his secret. Martha. Martha was distracted with much serving. Jesus had come over for dinner and there was a number of people doing a number of different things. And Martha got distracted by all the business and was not paying attention to Jesus. And Jesus said, Martha, you are compassed about by many things. And finally, Peter, who got distracted in wanting to know what John should be doing. There are consequences of being distracted because while we're distracted, progress is not made. And if Satan can distract a person from following Christ, whatever he uses, then we cannot move forward or make further progress. If we are to follow Christ, we are to keep our eyes on the shepherd instead of other sheep. Don't compare your mission and the purpose of others. Lives have been lost through distraction, especially in industry where they often use power tools. So it is with the church. Lives have been lost to the kingdom because the distraction overcame them and they have walked away. Jesus was saying to Peter, Peter, mind your own business. What I have for John is nothing for you to know. Jeremiah 29 verse 11 says this. I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you a hope and a future. Have you noticed what it says? Plans I have for you. Plans to prosper you. Plans not to harm you. Plans to give you a hope. Plans to give you a future. Have you noticed who it's addressed to? It doesn't say Tom, Dick and Harry, does he? But you. Proverbs 19 verse 21 says, Men devise many plans. But only God's plan stands. God's timetable 
is already set. And we can either get in line with it or stay outside of it. We can look back and see that everything that was spoke about, prophesied about, all came to be in the life of Jesus. Yet the plans of God are still being worked out today. And there will come a day when God's final judgment and plan for humanity will occur when he comes to take his church for himself. But there, until then, it's what we do today. Some churches have been blessed with beautiful buildings. But even a building can become a distraction when we see the building as the church instead of the people in it. So what is church? And I come across this poem by Robert Ferguson that says this. She is the plan of God on earth, always in her father's eye, cherished, mysterious, beautiful and potent beyond measure, king empowered and life infused. She emerges triumphant, limitless with potential, a harbour for the hopeless, and an answer for the ages, the church resplendent, a bride for his son. She is the body of Christ on earth, born like her head amidst tribulation under jealous skies, cradled in her innocence and guarded for his purpose. She grows in wisdom and stature with victory on her lips and freedom in her hands. Hers is an unstopping cause. She embraces the world with dignity, honour and compassion. She gives vision to the sightless and life to the dying. She is the family of God on earth. Within her compass, the hungry find sustenance. And the weary receive strength. She is a haven for recovering humanity. Enthralled by grace. She invites the broken, the vulnerable and the outcast to be immersed in love. She stands imperfect, but perfect, perfection resides within her. She is flawed, but is washed with forgiveness. She has a treasury of faith and a wealth of belonging. She is the bride of Christ on earth, readying herself for the day when all eyes will be upon her, prepared and presented before the Lord, the Lamb for whom the world waits who comes like the rising sun, majestic and magnificent beyond description. While she dazzles with reflected glory, spotless, perfect and mature, she bows low to cast her crowns and passionately worship him. A temporal focus becomes her eternal gaze. gaze. She is the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. Are we a church like that? Or have we become distracted by other things? There was a bad accident the other day at Shrewsbury and the traffic was being diverted around the incident. When I found my way out of the traffic, on the other side of the motorway, it was chock-a-block. Yet that side of the motorway was clear. So I looked towards where the accident had occurred. And the reason the traffic wasn't moving was because they were all distracted. 
They all wanted to see what had happened. Although the way was for, although the way was clear for them to move forward, the traffic was at a standstill. See what happens when we become distracted. A distraction is something that takes your attention away from what you're supposed to be doing. As we try to move forward, may it be it's time to consider if we are allowing any distractions in our minds, in our hearts, in our all being, that is stopping each of us in being obedient to the call of God for our lives. Song 325 says this, Thus supported, even I, knowing thee forever nigh, shall attain that deepest joy, living unto thee. No distracting thoughts within, no surviving hidden sin, thus shall heaven indeed begin, here and now in me. Is the Lord challenging each of us this morning? As he said to Peter, Peter, what is that to thee? Follow me.
dear Lord, you call us to follow, to turn away from our own selfish interests and to take up our cross and follow after you, even if the path is difficult to see or is heading in a direction we could never have, have chosen for ourselves. Forgive us for being so quick to question and so hesitant to follow. Help us to see with eyes of faith, rather than from our own human point of view. Teach us to follow without fear, knowing that you are always with us, leading the way. Amen. The benediction. Go now to follow the way of Jesus. See others as he did. Dare to give freely as he did. And to love unconditionally as he did. Go, embraced by the source of life, love and hope. In the company of the word of life. Encouraged by the breath of life. Amen. Thank you.
Sometimes we see the deepest moon. 